Then silently, effortlessly, like some great, vengeful bird of prey, he swoops into the moonless, cloud-draped sky, towards a towering structure nearby. Behold, the vision. Today on the Comic Book Report, The Avengers Omnibus Volume 2 from Marvel Comics. Stick around and check it out. Greetings everyone, my name is Dominic and today you're tuning in to the Comic Book Report where we review comic books and graphic novels so you can get an idea of what to read. And today I'm back with another Marvel Omnibus review. Today we're back in the world of Avengers. That's right, we're going to be looking at Volume 2 of the Omnibus line from the Silver Age and I for one had a blast making my way through it. Can't wait to talk to you about it all today, but before we dive in I do want to say a thank you to our channel sponsor, Organic Price Books. Com. If you're looking for your own comic book collected editions, I highly encourage you to check out the website. You can find a link for it in this video's description, and if you see something there you like, you can even use my discount code at checkout, The Comic Book Report, to save $2 off of your order. Please note if you use my affiliate link or code to make a purchase, I will earn a small commission, but it's a fantastic way to support the channel. Thank you so much for considering. Now let's get started with today's Omnibus Review. First, some quick facts about today's collection. The issues in this volume were written primarily by Stan Lee and Roy Thomas, and illustrated primarily by Don Heck and John Bushima. The comics in this volume were first published by Marvel Comics beginning in 1966. The volume itself collects the Avengers issues 31 through 58 and annual issues 1 and 2, X-Men issue 45, and Not Brand Eck issue 5 and 8. This oversized hardcover edition has nice glossy print paper stock, a sewn binding, and a total of 848 pages. At this time, I'd like to go ahead and issue a general spoiler warning. I will be flipping through the contents of today's collection and commenting on plot points throughout. You've been advised. Okay, and here's our first look at today's Omnibus for review. I should note right from the jump that this is the direct market or DM cover for this Omnibus. I'll go ahead and throw up a thumbnail of the standard edition cover for the Omnibus. I believe it's an Alex Ross. Uh, really both fantastic covers. The DM comes from one of the issues in this Omnibus. The other one is kind of a more modernization. Uh, again, both are really fun. I just happen to get the DM. The spine, as people can probably tell, is the more updated spine design with the smaller font and the little picture window here at the bottom. I should note as well the different covers have different pictures in the little window. The DM has this nice one of Vision, which is really fun. This is, of course, the Volume 2. As we make our way to the back cover of this omnibus, which will show us the thumbnail of all the issues included, uh, I will say I did review Volume 1 of the Avengers Omnibus recently on the channel. If you haven't checked that out, I definitely encourage it. I do have an older printing for that omnibus, so it has the older spine design, things like that. But they did reprint Volumes 1 through 4 of these Avengers Silver Age omnibuses in this last year, and they released for the first time Volume 5. So a great time to pick up these books while they're still in print. I was thankful enough to get volumes 2 through 5, which I didn't have in my collection, so I am making my way through. And now that we've done our first quick look at the dust jacket, I want to look one final time, this time also examining the interior flaps, kind of spreading it all out to get everything at a glance, and then I'll transition to showing you the hardback book itself and some of the art or design we have printed on it. This is also a good time to note, if you didn't catch it earlier, the back of this book does not mention the not brand Eck issues, I believe 5 and 8 or whatever I said earlier. Uh, these are kind of silly little parody, small comics uh, that Marvel did. Uh, those are included in this book, at least parts of them as far as I can tell. Uh, they are noted in the table of contents, but for whatever reason, they aren't shown in the back part of the dust jacket. Uh, they're not thumbnailed, anything like that. So I did want to note that they do have some inclusions in the book, and you do see it in the table of contents. Uh, but yeah, otherwise, this is a pretty straightforward design for these modern Silver Age uh, reprints uh, for these Marvel omnibuses. Really like it. I think the design is really sleek. I love the Avengers logo. Everything looks quite sharp. 
even got a little look at that picture window for the standard cover here on the actual hardback. Moving right along, I do want to share just a look at the binding for all of you. Like I said, I believe this is a sewn binding. Mine was bound really well. I had no issues. This thing laid flat quite well. At a, you know, 800-something page omnibus, it's not too cumbersome. It's easy to read, things like that. This was also at a time we had a nice white margin across all of our art, so really gutter loss isn't too much of a factor in a book like this. Okay, now let's go ahead and dive into the collection proper. Like all of these Marvel omnibuses, we have some nice end pages, followed by the title page, publication information, and pretty soon we're into the table of contents. Uh, they do have, again, those not brand Eck issues, along with all the other issues included in this collection. They're nice page numbered, indexed so well, so you can just jump right to the issue you're hoping to read if you choose to go that route. After that, we have a great introduction, which I really loved. We actually have a few introductions throughout this omnibus. Every 10 issues or so, usually from Roy Thomas. These are the same introductions I believe were provided in the Marvel Masterworks editions for Avengers, but they've all been reproduced here, which is really fun to see. Just the writer kind of waxing nostalgic about this period in Avengers uh, history, these 10 issues, some of the highlights or trivia. I think they're really great at setting the stage for all of the issues in the collection, and I just think they're really worth reading. And with that, we jump right into the next issue um, after what we had in Volume 1. We get all of these chronological Avengers issues. This one, like I mentioned earlier, includes the first two annuals, an X-Men issue that crosses over with Avengers, uh, and some of those not brand Eck issues. We also have letter pages included at the end of the issues where applicable, which is really fun to see. I like to skim through those. I'll admit I don't always read everything word for word as far as the letter pages go, but when I do skim through it, I do find some gems. It is kind of this cool time capsule thing. It's fun to see the creators kind of address what the uh, readers are thinking at the time. It's cool to see how they were maybe inspired by some of the notes as well. Anyway, it's a really fun facet of the Silver Age omnibuses from Marvel, getting those letter pages. Uh, at the end of the collection, too, we have a handful of extras, which we'll get to uh, at the end of this video. But like I said, we jump right into this book, and I really dug it. At this point, I'm already hooked in the Avengers. Like I said in my review for Volume 1, this is one of the better Marvel Silver Age titles I've had the pleasure of reading. I think for me, I'm always going to be a fan, first and foremost, in the Silver Age of Amazing Spider-Man and Fantastic Four. But this is probably my number three pick uh, in Marvel's Silver Age. I think one of the reasons for that is the ensemble cast and the kind of revolving door nature of the Avengers. Um, I really really like the variety we get in the cast of characters, and I think because there's so many of them, I frankly feel the way they balance it, everything felt very fresh, and I feel like the momentum was pretty good throughout these issues. I know with Silver Ages of Comics, we have a lot more word-centric comic presentation. It's less big splash pages with no dialogue or exposition. And frankly, it's more of the opposite, where we have like a lot of different panels. We have so much narration, dialogue, and the art, I'm not going to say it's second fiddle. The art is still very strong. I love the art we get here from Don Heck and John Bershima. Uh, but overall, I do feel like it's just very wordy, and that's not uncommon for Silver Age. But I do think because we have so many characters, by the time we bounce around all of them maybe once or twice, the issue's already over. And I think that that really helped me speed through a collection like this relatively for the Silver Age, and I really like that. I do think it'll still be a jarring transition for any modern comic readers. Anyone that's read maybe, I don't know, after 80s onward, this will be a bit of a change of pace for you as you adjust to kind of the older style of comic book storytelling, but there is something really great on how this is all approached. Uh, so Stan Lee did write a couple of these issues, but a bulk of the issues in this omnibus are from the great Roy Thomas, uh, with Stan Lee as kind of the editor on the book, and I really dug it. I really, really liked what Roy Thomas brought to this book. Uh, he kind of uh, grieves the fact in the intros that he wasn't really able to play with some of his favorite Avengers characters like Iron Man or Thor, um, at, a, at a certain point, Captain America even. No, instead he's relegated to characters like Wanda Maximoff and Pietro and Hawkeye. Uh, we have the introduction of the character of Hercules kind of standing in for Thor in many ways. That was a fun introduction. Uh, by the end of this book, we also have the introduction of the character Vision, who becomes a 
mainstay in the Avengers roster. Uh, really, really a fun uh, inclusion there as well. Um, of course, we have the Black Panther. Uh, there are, Again, there's a lot of really, really fun moves in this edition that I liked. We have Ant-Man or Goliath, what have you. We have Wasp. And we do have appearances from some of those other Avengers I mentioned, like Iron Man and Thor, uh, which really round out this collection nicely. I feel like at this point, we're really off to the races. A lot of these characters are really well-defined between appearing in Avengers before or in other comic books or solo titles we have going on at Marvel. I think the Marvel Universe is really just in full swing by this point. You do feel that shared universe quality. There are times when Captain America is in the book, and then next thing you know, he's off on his own adventures. Or we have references to these solo magazines and it's not like we miss out on a ton, but it makes you feel like you're immersed in this larger world. Uh, this omnibus also has a lot of appearances by Natasha Romanov, the Black Widow, which is really fun. At this point, she has kind of an on-again, off-again love interest angle with Hawkeye, but it's fun to have her kind of in the wings as a secondary character throughout this. Uh, we have Jarvis the Butler, of course, and we have a lot of notable villains, which is always fun in my mind. Uh, one of my favorite villains that was introduced in this collection again toward the end of the book is of course Ultron the kind of sentient evil robot of the Avengers um, I was first aware of that character kind of I think in pop culture first but definitely when I got to see Age of Ultron on the big screen for the Marvel Cinematic Universe I know I was a little bit late to that party but to go back and now see the comic book origins of this character it was just a lot of fun a note I want to make about this collection as well, I would say for the most part, a lot of these issues are episodic or maybe no more than two issues in length. Sometimes you'll have some that are maybe three, uh, but for the most part, we have kind of one-shot adventures and then just kind of ongoing uh, growth of relationships or dynamics with these characters. Why I like that, it's definitely part and parcel for the Silver Age of Comics where we have the kind of standalone feel for a lot of these issues, or again, at most, maybe two or three issues, uh, rather than... You you know, we have comic book runs now that span tens of twenties of almost a hundred issues, and it's one master narrative. Uh, I love that style of storytelling as well. But having this kind of episodic feel, it's really nice, and it divides up the reading quite well because you can take this book off your shelf, enjoy a story or two, put it right back on, and when you pick it up again, you don't really feel like you've missed out on too much. You're just jumping in for the next adventure. It also makes it feel like each individual issue is more complete. We don't have like a six or seven issue storyline. No, everything pretty much resolved in one or two issues which is really really fun if you're just trying to take little bites of it at a time i will say if you binge read this from cover to cover you do feel like a little bit of rinse repeat i do think that the storylines in general were pretty creative although there is that kind of like villain of the week and maybe kind of glib character interaction between the avengers of the week um, so there is kind of some repetitious feelings for a lot of this, uh, but for the most part, it kept pretty fresh. And like I said, I think that this title over some of the other Silver Age titles had the novel approach of kind of shuffling that main cast of characters. Just when you'd get settled into a team and the dynamics, we'd have an Avenger or two leave the team, only to have other ones join, whether they be new or kind of returning members. And I think because of that, I was always kept kind of vigilant <laughs> in the reading. Uh, like I said, I really enjoyed when they introduced the character of Hercules. I didn't know a ton about that character in the Marvel Universe, and he does kind of feel a bit like a Thor stand-in in many ways, but I like the way they introduced them. Essentially, he gets exiled from Olympus, and he's supposed to be on Earth for a year. While he's there, he kind of befriends the Avengers. They let him stay with them in the Avengers mansion, and eventually he joins the team, and he kind of is a really, really big kind of just strength powerhouse kind of tank for the team, and then ultimately he sort of proves himself, and he gets out of exile, and he's able to go home. Uh, but that was a really fun, nice, like, kind of coming in, going out of this character. I know he comes back at some point in the future, but I did like his tenure on the Avengers. I think he added a fun wrinkle to the team. I was, like I said, really eager to see the birth of Vision. Vision, I think, is just one of the coolest Avengers characters, period. And I knew that this volume would have the introduction of that character, and I couldn't wait. That was one of the huge selling points for me for this book. And then I look at it, and I find out that the introduction of Vision occurs in the last maybe two or three issues of this omnibus. So if you're like me and one of the main selling points for this book was the vision, yes, you get the introduction in this. Yes, it is worth it. In fact, there's some of the strongest issues in this whole collection, at least in my mind. The two issues that essentially introduce Viz, um, I think are some of the best along with the annuals. Uh, but anyway, while those are definitely included, they're at the end of the book. So this is not like a book filled with the vision. I think for that, I'm hoping volume three has that. I know I'm actually making my way through that right now. And so far, vision is there. And it's 
that's fantastic. Um, but this book was still really good, even without Vision. Like I said, I really got to know the character of Hercules. It was fun to see Black Panther show up, and he kind of gets as a stand-in for Captain America toward the end of this book as well. Really sad to see Captain America start to kind of fade out of this book as well. He was kind of the de facto leader of the Avengers for much of this, uh, but he kind of transitions out as well. I know, it's, again, it's a revolving door. These characters do come back, and the team uh, dynamic shifts a lot. Uh, we definitely got more of Ant-Man and the Wasp, or he's mostly Goliath in this volume. However you want to say it, Hank Pym and Janet Van Dyne, they're definitely bigger presences in this book, I would say, overall. I think that they have a lot more to do as well in this omnibus compared to Volume 1. I think you get a little bit more agency for both these characters, and like you get a little bit more depth. Another character I just really love in these early Avengers issues, I knew that he was an Avengers mainstay. I've definitely read this character before. I know I med read the Matt Fraction run for this character, who is, of course, Hawkeye. But getting to know Clint Barton, getting to know Hawkeye from the beginning, I know there were earlier appearances where he was kind of a villain, but the early appearances in Avengers, rather, in these couple omnibuses, really like this character. He's kind of smug. He's a little bit of a rogue character. He kind of bristles and rubs people the wrong way. He's a little short-fused. But I think it makes him just really striking as a character. When everything can feel a little bit squeaky clean, Hawkeye's definitely there to kind of rain on the parade. And it's really, really something that makes this character a lot more engaging and relatable and just interesting. Really enjoy that we have Hawkeye as just a strong presence throughout this book. We also have introductions and kind of usages of the Black Knight, the new Black Knight rather, who's trying to be a hero but really kind of misfires with the Avengers, does his own thing. I know eventually this character also goes on to the Defenders and other things in the Marvel Universe. Uh, but yeah, Dane Whitman is introduced in the pages of Avengers and this is a fun character as well. I think he's used kind of like Natasha Romanoff, the Black Widow, or kind of just in the wings secondary character will pop up when he will but yet another example of Avengers lore is just building we have so many characters coming in and out of this book that it again it just feels very fresh I know for me, this omnibus, like I said, the issue started around 1966, so we're going like mid toward into the later 60s by the time of this omnibus. I really love this era. This is still prime silver age, but we already feel like it's starting to mature in its way. We're starting to really settle into these characters. The kind of interactions we're getting feel less superficial, feel like their relationships are deepening as you go through these stories. And I think, like I said, because of the revolving door, we always have new sets of built-in conflict as the team just adapts and adjusts to different variables, different people on the team, different uh, situations, learning to be an Avenger, different protocols, and I like that. I like that there's also still this air of mystery around some of them. Not all of their identities have been revealed. Uh, this edition, you get to know more about, okay, this guy's Hank Pym, this guy, this gal's Janet Van Dyne, uh, you know, and we know Steve Rogers is Captain America, but some of their identities are still sort of hidden. Nobody knows that Iron Man is Tony Stark yet. We just think Tony Stark is sort of this benefactor for the Avengers for no reason. Uh, but I really like it. I think that this era, like I said, is really fun. And even by this point, like I said, it, these stories are so much better than a lot that were in Volume 1, at least in my opinion. We're starting to feel like we're getting into the swing of things in this book. And I feel like whenever we had a character shift, there is this level of like, okay, what happens now? What's going to go on now? Uh, we even lose Pietro and Wanda at a certain point. They kind of get taken into Magneto's whole regime and kind of get are they abducted? Are they starting to get swayed for the cause of the evil mutants again? Who knows? But we have a huge shakeup with that as well. It leads to kind of an Avengers versus X-Men issue. Uh, we have a little bit of a crossover. That was really fun in this book as well. It was great seeing like an early Magneto appearance battling the X-Men. I thought that that was really well done. I really do think overall this omnibus has a ton of gems. Can you start with this omnibus if you don't have volume one? I think, yeah, sure you could. I can almost bet you that any of these early Silver Age volumes if you had an opportunity to pick up one and just weren't able to start from the very beginning or you missed a chunk can you just pick up these books and read I'm going to say yes. I think they're way more accessible than modern omnibuses where you could get lost in a lot of continuity. For the most part, again, these Silver Age stories are a couple issues long at most. A lot of are just one-shots. And any pertinent details, usually you'll get some narration or some little like editorial bubble that fills you in on context you need. It's as if each of these comics were maybe someone's first, and they fill you in on the pertinent details. That being said, I do think it's fun to start at the beginning, especially if you can find these books where you can, starting with 
with volume one, but already I do prefer volume two. I think that the stories are a bit stronger. No, we don't have Jack Kirby. We don't have as many of the early introductions of some of the uh, core Avengers team or some of the villains we have here that are Avengers specific, uh, but we still have a lot of notable first appearances, a lot of great interactions, and overall just a really strong, fun Silver Age book. And here we are at the Vision issue. Behold the Vision. Love that red cover. It is so striking. It's just iconic. What a great first appearance issue. And we start off with a bang. We start off with Vision kind of flying through the rainy night. I really don't know what it is, but this issue and the one immediately following it are just so on another level. It's so elevated. They made it feel like a prestige event. These could almost have been annuals as far as the quality, but they're just two run-of-the-mill issues. But really, Roy Thomas just nailed it. He came in so strong in these issues. The art is fantastic. We do get a beautiful splash page or two. Really just love these issues. Cannot speak highly enough about them. Again, outside of the annuals, and even with the annuals in mind, these are probably the strongest issues in the whole collection for me. I just really adored them. I really do feel like this just unlocked a new gear for this creative team, and I really just raised my bar of what I can come to expect from them. And I know Roy Thomas, I believe, wrote a run of like 70-something issues of Avengers, so I know I'm in for a lot of Roy Thomas in my future, but I really enjoy him, and I really, after reading this issue specifically, what I believe he's capable of is just that much higher. Really, really enjoyed it. Before too long, though, after we finish that kind of Vision Ultron story, we will eventually make our way into the Not Brand Eck issues. Uh, these are really just silly. They're kind of satirical, goofy, more cartoony, animated kind of look to them. Uh, and they kind of just poke fun at the comics that are showcased, in this case, the Avengers. Uh, so they kind of lampoon a lot of the efforts of the comic creators or some of the characters or their inherent tragedies or arcs. Um, to me, these just kind of felt like like zany, okay kind of inclusions. Um, I still would have loved to see them included on the list on the back of the dust jacket. I don't know why they didn't include them. I often see them in the listings. Uh, so I was surprised to see them in the table of contents and included here. Always love having additional issues, but I kind of just wish we got that on the dust jacket as well. I don't know if they cut that for space or what, but rest assured, issue 5 and 8 of that are here, at least these Avengers portions, if not the whole thing. Um, after those issues, we are treated to a wealth of extras, including a lot of behind-the-scenes kind of outlines or kind of creations or notes. Really like seeing all of this. We got also a lot of covers for the reprints or the collected editions for some of these Avengers issues. Really, really fun. Like I said, there's a healthy amount of extras at the back of this book. As you can see, I'm still flipping my way through here, and this isn't even every single page. But yeah, we just have a ton, a ton of extras here. Love seeing that, especially for a collection this old. A lot of the kind of historical outline kind of inks or initial pencil pages were just a real treat. Or seeing what these issues look like in reprint when Marvel went and did like secondary issue prints of some of these main stories. Again, the covers of some of these older collections. It's just really fun to see. Like I said, it's bonus artwork, bonus behind-the-scenes material, and I think it really just pads out this omnibus nicely i think that this is a really good size for an omnibus especially a silver age collection you know seven to maybe 900 pages they're not too cumbersome not too obnoxious uh, and oftentimes have a lot of great extras like this anyway that is avengers omnibus volume two and now all that's left is to give this collection a grade for another standout Marvel Silver Age collection, the Comic Book Report is happy to give the Avengers Omnibus Volume 2 a B+. Like the Volume 1 before it, this continues on with some great, great early Avengers storylines. We have a fantastic roster of characters that seems to be always revolving, a lot of great villain introductions, and honestly, I really feel like this title is beginning to hit its stride. This was such a fantastic read. I think fans of the Silver Age owe it to themselves to check out this title. I think for modern readers maybe sample a couple of these issues online or see if you can find kind of cheaper reprints before you invest in an omnibus like this but if you can get into the gear for silver age reading this is really a fun one at least in my mind but let me know what you think of the avengers this kind of early stan lee or roy thomas stuff like i said i'm a fan i'm still making my way through i'd love to hear your thoughts though and onward to omnibus volume three sometime in the future thank you so much for watching everyone and until next time this has been the comic book report please don't forget to leave your like, comment, and maybe check out another video on your way out. Thanks everyone, have a good one.